I don't need to tell you that you need to create content to grow your business and make sales. But what I can tell you is all that content that you're creating and that overwhelm feeling that you're having, you don't need to have. You can actually create a content calendar that will save you time and also increase the sales that you are making with less content. So let me show you how you can do this. Creating content typically isn't one of the most favorite tasks for business owners. Some of us do like creating content, I do. But there are so many other things that we need to do that sometimes content creation can fall down the priority list because we don't see an immediate result from the content. As in, when we create content, we don't see sales, we don't see clients. And if that's why you're not creating content, we've got to fix your content calendar immediately. Last week, I actually deep dived into a little bit more as to why your content isn't converting. So if you didn't check that out, I will link it right up here for you to watch next. Now, if you're thinking, crap, Trina, this is me. I am creating content, but I don't see any immediate results. When I publish a video, I don't see a sale. When I publish an Instagram reel, I don't get a new client. Let's work on that content calendar to fix that. The first thing that you're going to need to do to start saving your time when it comes to content creation and make sure you're focusing on the right content that's going to deliver you sales is creating a content calendar that is going to give you structure to what you're creating, aligning with what you're selling. This then becomes the foundation of your entire content calendar so that you know when you decide you wanna do this video, you know what it's linked to to make you sales. I see this quite often with my clients inside the YouTube coaching experience. They're just creating content to get out there and answering questions to get out there to grow their, their audience, to grow their reach, right? But they're not aligning that content with a sales goal. And that's what we're here to do. We aren't hobbyists here, we're business owners. Each piece of content that we create should be aligned to a sales goal. I'm interested if you currently have a content calendar that aligns with your sales goal right now, go ahead and comment sales goals if your content aligns with them or no sales goals if it doesn't align just so I can get a sense of the room, so to speak, at where we're all at. Now let's go to the actionable steps you can start doing today to start building that content calendar that will generate leads and sales with every piece of content you create. My content always starts with YouTube first. So I build my entire content calendar around what YouTube video I am creating and what the goal of that YouTube video is going to be. I do wanna mention, cause there's quite a few of you out there that do podcasting. If you want to put your podcast on YouTube, you still need to be planning those podcasts with YouTube first in mind. Because if you wanna maximize your podcast on YouTube, it's gonna be built with a YouTube strategy in mind first. Then you can repurpose it anywhere else. But again, if you wanna get that evergreen leverage that YouTube has with your podcast, you've gotta play by YouTube rules and build a YouTube strategy for that podcast. My content always starts with YouTube first. That's the first step in my content calendar. The next thing is every piece of video that I put out on YouTube is built for a playlist funnel a YouTube playlist funnel. These are generally four to five videos that flow one into another and lead into more sales of my coaching program. Because it's basically like a module in a course, it's lessons that build on each other. It gets people not only binge watching each video within that playlist, so again, thinking about that playlist as a funnel, each video takes the viewer on a journey deeper and deeper into the topic so that when they get to the final video, they're a lot more warm than they were at the beginning, and there is a higher chance that I will then convert them into my highest offer, which is my coaching program. And this also makes YouTube happy because if I can get people to watch two to three videos in one session, YouTube's gonna push my content to more people. So I'm always thinking about my content here on YouTube and my playlist funnel. I will mention, even though those other four videos that are leading up to the final video where I'm pitching my highest ticket offer, I'm not leaving out my other options that I have available to buy as long as the content 
in those videos align with an offer, I'm going to drop it in there. So in last week's video, I mentioned my video game plan that you can buy because I was talking about how to fix your content to get better calls to action. In my video game plan, I share how to add calls to action. If I'm talking about a workflow or how I save time, I may then say, check out my YouTube workflow and learn how I create my YouTube videos from start to finish. I may also mention if you want to learn a deeper understanding of how YouTube is working right now, you may want to grab my Evergreen and Evermore workshop bundle. All right, but the, the, the calls to action within those videos need to make sense. And they're very small clips of call to action. They're not the big end of video call to action and they make sense where they fit. So it doesn't feel like it's an ad or salesy. Once I know what my playlist funnel is gonna be, those are five videos, right? That's five weeks worth of content that I know is going to be rolling out on my YouTube channel. And I also know what the sales goal is going to be for each one of those videos as well. The last one, the sales goal is going to be to get people into my YouTube coaching experience. And then based on the topics of the other four, I'm going to weave in some other low ticket offer that I have available that makes sense for the viewer watching that video. Now I can start working on my video game plans, which is going to lead me into the second step in building a content calendar that's going to save you time and make you more money and that is batching specific tasks. I know some people can batch, some people feel they can't, but I'm telling you, if you're busy and you wanna create consistent content that gets you consistent sales, it is going to be best for you and your time management to batch specific things. Now, I recommend batching video game plans, all right? I'm not saying you wanna batch video game plan, recording, editing, uploading that is too many hat switching to go from writing content to filming content to editing content. Every time you jump from one of those tasks is going to take you time to catch up to that mode, so to speak. So you're going from writing to filming to editing. Instead, you want to do all the writing tasks first. Then you want to do all the filming tasks next. We're going to get more into that in a moment, but I wanted to explain the difference between how I am batching tasks. When I sit down to plan my videos using my video game plan, and since I mentioned this quite a few times, I will tell you, you can get my video game plan and a video on how to best use it at trinalittle.com forward slash video game plan. But the reason I like to batch these together is because like I said, it's a series of videos. So when I sit down and I plan the first video, I think about the first video's title and thumbnail. Then I think about what is the hook and then I write the content. Then I know that content needs to flow into that second video. So what is the second video's title and thumbnail going to be? What is the hook going to be? Okay, now I can refresh that call to action to the next video in video one. All right, now I can write the content to video two. I get to the end of video two, I think about what's the third video, title, thumbnail, hook. Now I can update the call to action for video two to make it flow better into video three. And this is how I get people down my YouTube playlist funnel. So once I have those five video game plans done, I then move into filming and batch filming. I'm going to tell you, if you wanna be consistent on YouTube, you need to batch filming. And the best way to do this is to put your filming time on a calendar and stick to it. Listen, I've got kids, I've got sporting events, sporting practices, doctor's appointments, dentist appointments, all the different things going on every day of the week, just like you. But I prioritize my filming time just like my own dentist appointment. Now, when it comes to how many videos to batch in one time, I have batched up to 15 videos in one sitting right before I had my second child. Do not recommend it for a few reasons. By the fourth to fifth video, I can start to see that my energy is leaving and the quality of that video just dips. So you're going to want to find that sweet spot for you. How many videos can you create in one day that's not going to go beyond your energy level? So right now, like I said, minus two to three. The other reason why you don't want to go and like batch six months worth of content in one sitting is because you want to get real time feedback on your content to be able to tweak it and make it better in real time. So every time I publish a video, I'm looking at how did the title perform? How did the hook perform? How did the content perform? Okay, what do I realize from this video that I could make better in the next batch that I do? And since I'm only working two to three weeks at a time, 
I'm going to be making that next batch better every two to three weeks. So if you batch an entire six months worth of content and you realize, oh dang it, every time I say this, people leave my video. And I did that on all six months worth of content. You're either gonna have to refilm that or not fix it. So that's why I suggest finding your sweet spot for batching videos. The other reason you've got to batch videos is because look, we don't wake up like this and I don't want to do this every single day. I don't want to do my hair. I don't want to do my makeup. I want to roll out of bed in leggings and a sweatshirt someday, a messy bun. And so I want to utilize my filming time and my makeup and hair done time as best as possible. I've been playing around with what my content calendar actually looks like in Asana. You can check out a video where I go into more detail about it here, but it's constantly changing how I'm setting up the physical content calendar, but the strategy, the theme, the idea of my content calendar never changes. It always remains YouTube first and the video playlist funnel because the goal for every single piece of content that I put out is to not take a whole lot of time doing it, right? Because I got other things to do, but to also boost my sales, to make sales with every single video. Now having a content calendar is one thing, but making sure your content is driving traffic to your opt-in, your lead magnet, your course, your work with me page is another thing. So in the video that's on your screen right now, I'm gonna walk you through how to create evergreen content specifically here on YouTube that will bring you sales long after that video is published because that's the whole reason I hang out here. I can make sales from a video that I published from 2021, three years ago. So click the video that's on your screen right now and don't forget to subscribe if you want more strategies to scale your course and coaching business with YouTube.